Yavapai Pie Broadcasting and the City of Cottonwood proudly present Inside Cottonwood, an inside look at the decisions and issues of the City of Cottonwood. Brought to you by Arizona Smile Designers. Community health education acts to encourage the behavior changes that increase physical vitality and healthy living. When provided useful health education, people can increase their physical activity, choose not to use tobacco, and make better health choices in general that will lower the risk of chronic disease, improve overall health, and lead to a better quality of life. Good morning and welcome to Inside Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Edition. My name is Jason Little, Recreation Manager for the City of Cottonwood. And with me today, I have Miss Carla Hover. Sorry if I pronounced it that wrong, uh, no, Carla. You but could. she's the uh, Health Education Coordinator for Yavapai County. Good morning. Good morning. Carla, when I bring someone uh, new to the show, uh, when I bring them on, uh, I usually like to uh, put them on the hot seat. Unfortunately, you're the only one here today, so uh, you're going to be the, be my uh, guinea pig, okay. so to speak. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you hail from, uh, where life's taken you? I have been all over this country. I was born in Oregon, raised in Maine, have lived in Connecticut and New Mexico and Albuquerque, and landed in Cottonwood about 17 years ago. Wow, what brought you to Cottonwood? Was it the job? or uh, There was a job opening, uh, so we moved to the area. We were looking for a smaller school system for the kids rather than having them in school in Albuquerque. So my children went sc through school here, and they've moved on, but I love it and I'm still here. Really, I was just uh, in Albuquerque for the weekend. So you went from the West Coast to the East Coast, back to back the West. Back to the West Coast. <laughs> well, you have been all over. That's, uh, yes. that's pretty phenomenal. Uh, Carla, I got to ask before we get into the questions and what we're going to talk about today, and that's health education, and that's why we, of course, have Carla on the show. But uh, why is community health education needed? Uh, community health ed is so important uh, for our schools, for our community. It gives people an opportunity to take responsibility for their own lives and their own health. And frequently when I'm working, not just with kids, but with adults, um, and we're just giving information, and they say, oh, I didn't realize that. That's really simple. I could do that. Yeah. So people can make positive differences in their lives with that, with little pieces of information and uh, taking responsibility. Yeah, speaking of uh, positive differences, uh, you and I were just talking briefly before the show started, and uh, I'd like to bring that back up again. Sorry to reroute us a little bit, but uh, you said when you initially started, that was 15 years ago? It's been 15 years now. Uh, there were two programs. Yes, I started. We were doing physical activity and tobacco education in the schools and we had the two programs and probably half a dozen health educators. Uh, we now have, as of this fall, we will have 11 programs and 11 health educators. So uh, can you take credit for uh, those other nine? Or? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I'm sure you had an instrumental we, hand. Yes, we apply for that. grants. As we see that things are, are needed in this area, we apply for grants, whether they're state or federal grants, and get the money and pull the money in for the community so that we then have the educators to go out and give out the information. That's great. Uh, for the audience, uh, Carla doesn't, uh, she didn't mention, she also sits on numerous committees. Uh, I've actually been here about the same time, and I can remember 15 years ago when she was out at the softball field. So, uh, yes. yeah, it's so been quite a, quite a ride. All over the community. All over the community, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, Carla, you mentioned briefly that you have 11 health educators in your office. Mm -hmm. uh, how many do you directly supervise, and who are they? Okay, I have three health educators in my office here in the Cottonwood office. Uh, the rest are in Prescott, but the three that I have are Katie McCabe, uh, we have Amanda Lang, and we are just bringing on Heather Klomperens. So we have three brand, you know, two new ones. Katie's been with us for a couple of years now. Uh, we lost a couple because they moved or went on to other adventures. Really? Uh, so we're excited to have some new people on board and get into some schools. I didn't know Heather accepted that job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Well, anyway, I guess Amanda, I thought she worked at me. So is she new too? She, yes, Amanda's brand new this year, well, within the last month. You've picked and some. We've got some really yeah, good people coming on. That's fantastic. Uh, I'm sure everyone would want to know, I would, uh, when you're seeking out these services, is there generally a cost? There is no cost for any of our services. We go into all of the schools. There's no cost for the schools for any of our programs. Our educators' time is free. All of them are, our materials are free, um, everything that we take in. And 
anything that we do with adult programs are free of charge as well. That's great, and uh, they're kind. They're somewhat uh, similar, and uh, you can assimilate the two. Uh, the, the next question: uh, What is the mission of the Community Health Services Department? The mission is to get out there in the community and help people contribute to their wellness, help them with the knowledge that they might need, um, and and get get people healthy. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I guess that would segue into the next question. Uh, what are some goals of the program? Uh, the goals are to reach our, our community on both sides of the mountain, but to reach the community, get the information to them, increase the healthiness, um, get as much knowledge out there as possible. Is there a lot of uh, interagency cooperation? Do you work with the people on the Prescott side? Yes. Yes. We're actually all one department. Um, we have we have people working in all different areas, but we're one department housed under community health education, um, and that that's where that's our umbrella program. And Leslie Horton, who I believe has also been on some of these shows, is my program manager really? for all of the community health programs. So do you have to drive to Prescott quite a bit? I mean, do you guys have a lot of meetings, um, or is it we, phone? We email? do a couple of, a couple times a month. We might drive to Prescott a couple times a month. They might come here. The rest of it's done by phone. That's fantastic. Uh, you said that when you first started, there were two programs. I know one was, I think, tobacco cessation or mm -hmm. whatever in the schools. Mm -hmm. What's, what has the program achieved? Um, there's actually been a decrease in the number of, of kids, teenagers, taking up smoking in the, in the last 10 years. Um, so I think that's great. And I still see, because I'm out in the community, I still see kids that say, I remember you. You came into the school and we talked about this, this, and this. So they remember when I was in there talking to them about tobacco use um, and why the harms. They can tell me the chemicals in tobacco. They can tell me the different, the reasons they shouldn't. Um, but we, and we also focus on resistance skills. How do they say no to their peers? Um, so a lot of them are learning those as well. I know it was probably a labor and volunteer, <laughs> uh, really hard to put it all together, intensive. But uh, do you guys still do the body walk? We still do the body walk. And we actually, we've transferred it to another grant because originally the body walk was a physical activity grant through the uh, Center for D Disease Control. So we still do the body walk. It's a third grade field trip. We see um, about 800 kids on this side of the mountain, all third graders, and about 1,100 on the Prescott side of the mountain. So we do two body walks a year, and the kids get to come in, and they learn about all parts of the body and how to keep them healthy. Everything yeah. from dental to lungs to physical activity and muscles. So it's, it's three days, and you're right, it's labor intensive, and we're always looking for community volunteers because we, we run out of energy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but one of the great things we have going is we've now picked up the uh, National Junior Honor Society from CMS, and we train them to do some of the body parts and some of the characters in the body walk, and they work with us, and they're actually peer teaching these younger kids, and the younger kids love it uh, because they're talking to middle school kids, and the middle school kids are relating to them. And it's really a fun event done that's, that way. That's great. Initially, I was apprehensive uh, when you first had That was my first year here. <laughs> but when you see it, and it's so tactile for the kids. I mean, yeah. it's something they can touch and they can see. And I really thought it had a lot of, I mean, great yeah. benefits. And I'm glad you guys still do yeah. that. Uh, are health education services offered to everyone? I mean, all ages? Uh, pretty much we cover everything from preschool, we can do preschool all the way up through high school, and then we also have adult programs. We have specific programs, so they have to be some, it's a school that's taking, doing our programs, or a teacher that signed up, or a community organization that would like to do something. Uh, but yes, it's available all, all through the entire lifespan. That's fantastic. Uh, Carla, I'd like to go ahead and uh, go to break. Uh, what I typically do when we have someone new on the, on the show, if you could give uh, maybe the audience a telephone number uh, that they could call you or someone at if they had any okay. questions. Okay, if you have additional questions, you can call 634-6858, which is my direct line to my desk, and I would be happy to answer any questions or refer you on to somebody else if there's a program that I'm not working in. That's great, and an email address? Uh, Carla.hover, H-O-V-E-R, at yavapai.us. 
There you have it, folks, 634-6858. Uh, that's where you can contact Carla directly at her desk or her uh, email address, carla.hover at... Yavapai. Yavapai. Dot U.S. Yavapai dot U.S. We'll see you when we return from the break. Meet the team at Arizona Smile Designers, offering complete, comprehensive, restorative, and aesthetic dentistry. Dr. Vergara and Dr. Lord specialize in dental health, implants, and cosmetic dental procedures. Expert staff and state-of-the-art equipment bring forth the most from your smile. Dr. Ripplinger conveniently comes to Arizona Smile Designers for oral surgery and complicated procedures. Visit Arizona Smile Designers at 350 South Willard in Cottonwood. Insurance and new patients are welcome. Call 634-8610. If you suspect your teen is using a cell phone to connect to drugs, don't ignore the signs. Go to the partnership at drugfree.org. Good morning and welcome back to Inside Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Edition. Uh, with me today I have uh, Ms. Carla Hover with the uh, Yavapai County Community Health Education Department. Yes. And uh, we're talking about a menagerie of things and uh, I guess I'll use that to uh, kind of segue into my next question for you, Carla. And uh, what types of programs do you guys offer for the community? We offer all types of school programs. We do a community wellness program that inc includes physical activity and nutrition, substance abuse prevention. Uh, volunteerism, uh, bullying prevention um, in the schools. We also offer healthy relationships and a s sexual health program in the upper grades. Um, and then we also offer uh, safe routes to school, which is biking and walking safety. And then for adults, we do a Living Well program, which is a six-week chronic disease self-management program. Um, and we offer the Ash Line, which is a tobacco cessation line that's a statewide free line. Um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but we offer all kinds of different different things. It really sounds like it. And what really impressed me is uh, I was actually walking the uh, middle school campus just, I think it was last Wednesday or Thursday, and you guys have a lot of posters up that are, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, eye-catching. And if kids were being bullied or uh, some things were going on, there, uh, there was uh, you know, help and who they could contact. I don't know right. if you were a part of that. Yeah, but that, that's a school program, mm -hmm. and we, uh, but the Cottonwood Oak Creek School District does have a new Safe Schools program uh, that they started last year and have trained a lot of the teachers and community members in it. So and it's very visible. That's great. Now, Carla, i got to ask you, there's a lot of charter schools out there. There's a lot of uh, independence and things like that. Uh, what schools can participate in your program? Any, any schools in this community can participate in our programs. We cover public schools, we cover charter schools, um, and the private schools. All they have to do is call and say, we're looking for programs, what can you offer? And we'll try and come up with something for them. So will you actually go into the classroom and yes, teach them, or we do you go work actually, with admin? I usually start by going in and talking with the administration and finding out exactly what they're looking for, what their teachers want, what they see as an issue in their schools, and then we have the health educators to go in and actually provide the programs in the classroom. We go in as special speakers and do 45-minute to an hour presentations on the topic. Sometimes it's a four-session, five-session, six-session program so we go in once a week until we've covered all the topics. That's uh, fantastic. Uh, why do you consider health education to be important to schools, students, it, and parents? Yeah. The health of the students is so important just because we want a healthy community um, and it's very important. We've, we have multiple studies that show that um, academic the academic results are directly affected by the health of the children. So we know when they have physical activity, when they have good nutrition, they're going to do better academically. Um, we also have studies that show that there are less behavior problems in the classroom when the kids are eating good nutritious food and they're getting physical activity. So there's a lot of you, uh, a, a lot of agencies are behind this new uh, bringing uh, healthy foods and things like that to the yes, schools because absolutely. that's a, been a big push too and actually the second segment we're doing today is uh, with Fit Kids and we're going right. to get into that a little more. Uh, 
How do you help schools besides health education? We're available to go in for open houses, parent nights. We're really busy this time of year with school starting. Uh, we can go in and do parent presentations. A lot of people have, schools have parent nights. We can do special presentations. We can also do work site wellness for the staff, for the school staff. We can go really? in and do special programs for, for school staff, which is great because you know what? The teachers need it too. Absolutely. They, they have a hard job. They, I totally admire them and we, we need to get services out to them too. Yeah, I guess they reference that, their 180-day war, because they, yeah. I guess they all went back on Thursday or Friday, so are you involved with uh, the district in doing anything for their upcoming in-service? or? No, no, I have been in and talked to the superintendent, so she's up on all our new programs, uh, but I'll go in and talk to the teachers and administration once they get back and settled a little bit. Now, Carla, I enjoy working with you and I, I'm hoping uh, there's some things we've talked about off camera today uh, that maybe we could look at doing in the future but besides the schools what other community partnerships do you guys foster do you have? Well we, par we partner with Parks and Rec as often as possible. Um, we also partner with the local law enforcement. We do bike rodeos and walk to school days so law enforcement helps us. Uh, we partner with Fit Kids and they're through the ho they work through the hospital. Um, we also partner with Verde Valley Sanctuary and do the teen maze with, with them. And it seems like every community event we get going, we have, we try and pull in as many partners as possible. I gotta, have, I mean, I'm looking at the pictures <laughs> up there on the screen and uh, it looks like you had, how many people participated in that bike rodeo? The bike rodeo we had, I think we had only had 25. Um, it just looked kids, like a lot but parents. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Well, they were lined uh, up. Yes. Yeah. Well, they went, the lineup that they were sh that they were showing there was actually a walk to school day. Oh, was it really? Um, International Walk to School Day is coming up October third, and we will probably do walk to school day events through the whole week because we have at least four schools that want to participate. Right. And there are only so many of us, uh, but the bright T-shirts that you saw and the balloons. Um, last year we had. 125 kids from Cottonwood Elementary, and another 80 kids from Cottonwood Middle School, um, and then we had over 300 at West Sedona School, wow. all in the same week. Wow, that's great. Uh, but we provide them with the bright t-shirts and the balloons, get the community visibility out there, um, and then we also have the police departments come in and do traffic safety for us, and it gives the kids a chance to interact with the police department and the fire department um, when they're available on a positive note. Um, and they can see that they're out there watching out for their safety. So you mentioned that briefly. So uh, in what types of programs do you use those partners that you mentioned? Like for instance, we work with you Parks and Rec mm -hmm. on the bike rodeo. Can you just go through some of the others? I know there might yeah. be a little duplicity here, but yeah. if you could. Um, Parks and Rec, we do the bike rodeo. I think we also had police department, fire department, uh, Zoomer's Bike Shop all worked on the bike on the bike rodeo with us, as well as some community members, and the Police Explorers, the teen program, uh, worked with us on the bike rodeo as well. And then we also do Teen Maze, and Teen Maze is uh, Verde Valley Sanctuary, as well as law enforcement, uh, Fit Kids. I mean, all some of the same people appear over and over again, mm -hmm. um, but we, we get out there and pull in as many people as possible. Matt Force, we work with Matt Force quite a bit That's on great. community yeah. events. They're highly visible. Yes. And uh, we've worked with them. We actually applied and received uh, some grant monies through the uh, Youth Commission, mm -hmm. brought in a guest speaker. Uh, we've prefaced it a little bit, and uh, prior to going into break, I would like to talk about the bike rodeo just a little okay. bit more. What is it? What's the premise behind <laughs> People it? People want to know, what is a bike rodeo? Right, exactly. Uh, a bike rodeo is actually a skills course that gives a chance, a kids a chance to practice their skills on the bike. Because we have helmets, we do helmet fittings, and we give away helmets, which it's important that everybody wear their helmets. However, it's not just about the helmet. They've got to know the rules of the road. Um, we talk about hand signals. We talk about rules of the road, their, res their responsibility that it's not up to the cars to watch out for them. So it gives us a chance to do the education. Um, and then we have a skills course, so they get to practice things like control over their bike. They practice safe stopping, they practice um, biking, they practice turning. It's control over the bicycle. That's um, fantastic. Which is really, really important for those young kids to learn that. 
Yeah, it is, and we actually brought it up in our uh, last Bicycle Advisory Commission meeting. Uh, we didn't really go into it, you and I, but the importance of knowing hand signals and the rules of the road, especially with the new roundabouts that's been yes. created around the schools. Right. Because how does it work when a bicyclist goes in? He's just a part of the flow, right? Yes, it's an, just, an adult bicyclist is supposed to be in the traffic lane, part of the traffic flow going around the rotary roundabout like everybody else does. Um, I have not seen the new one yet over mm -hmm. by the schools, mm -hmm. but they are supposed to have crosswalks for all of the kids. And right. hopefully signage that tells people you need to stop for the crosswalks. So that'll be a priority over there. Yeah, I actually drove through for the first time uh, on Sunday, and it's it was nice not having to go around 6th Street up 8980 right. to where you need to go. <laughs> so it was nice that it was open. Well, uh, Carla, that leads us into our second break. If you could uh, once again uh, give the uh, viewing audience maybe a telephone number whereby they could reach you and maybe an email address. Okay. My phone number is 634-6858, and my email address is Carla. Dot hover, H O V E R, at yavapai.us. That's great. Once again, guys, 634 6858. That's where you can reach Carla directly. Uh, we're talking about community health services today, and we'll see you after the break. Meet the team at Arizona Smile Designers, offering complete, comprehensive, restorative, and aesthetic dentistry. Dr. Vergara and Dr. Lord specialize in dental health, implants, and cosmetic dental procedures. Expert staff and state-of-the-art equipment bring forth the most from your smile. Dr. Ripplinger conveniently comes to Arizona Smile Designers for oral surgery and complicated procedures. Visit Arizona Smile Designers at 350 South Willard in Cottonwood. Insurance and new patients are welcome. Call 634-8610. Thousands of fires across the United States are caused by careless people. Hi, I'm Fire Marshal Rick Contreras with the Cottonwood Fire Department. The major threat of human-caused fires are from burning debris that get out of control or improperly extinguished or unattended campfires. Remember that fireworks have no place on our wildlands. Become part of the solution. Learn more about proper fire safety by contacting a local fire department. Good morning and welcome back to Inside Cottonwood, the, co the show that keeps you in the know of everything going on here in the Verde Valley and your community. With me today I have Miss Carla Hover and she's with the uh, Yavapai County Community Health Education Department. And uh, school, Carla, it's starting, starting up starting real soon. Now. I think August 8th. I yes. think teachers went back on Friday or whatever. Uh, you briefly prefaced it earlier. Uh, can we talk a little bit more about what is Walk to School Day? What the uh, importance of it and how it got started. Yeah. Walk to School Day is an international event um, and what happens is people get together, schools, parents, teachers, and actually plan an event to increase the visibility of kids walking, give kids a chance to walk to school. Um, it's not, when, when I was a kid everybody walked to school. It was a community school and it was easy to walk. Here the schools are far enough apart that kids don't necessarily get to walk. Um, but we still want them to have the walking and, and biking knowledge so that they're safe. And we want to increase their visibility in the neighborhoods so that people, people driving to work especially through the neighborhood say, oh yes, this is a school area. Um, walk to school day is not until October because a lot of schools in other parts of the country don't start until September. Uh, but we do it in October. We'll be doing probably the whole first week in October. We'll have schools doing walk to school days every morning. We meet at a spot that's a mile or so or less away from the school. And we give them bright t-shirts. If they come on their bikes, they, we make sure they have helmets. Uh, we do balloons and signs. Uh, last year it was moms with kids in strollers and teachers and principals and it's just a lot of fun and we walk we have law enforcement involved so that they they cross cross us at all the major major intersections and one little boy said to me last year this is so much fun i love walking to school i want to do this more often and unfortunately i think his mom had driven him to the park so it probably wasn't possible but we do have a lot of kids that could walk to school yeah. Um, and I was telling you during the break, we had 
Um, one of those really stormy days last October when we had tornadoes up in Belmont, up in northern, up north, um, it was cloudy and stormy here, and we still had 70 kids that showed up from Cottonwood Middle School to walk to school together as a group. What a great turnout. Yeah, yeah. it was great. Yeah. So they really enjoy it. It's a really great community event. That's fantastic. And I'm sure, similar to Parks and Recreation, a lot of your programming probably coincides with the school calendar year. Right. Uh, what other programs would you like to mention or bring up? Um, well, we've talked about the school programs, uh, but we do, um, besides the body walk that we do for third graders, we also work with the Teen Maze, which is a middle school, early high school program that we do. Um, and that's a huge community partnership. It's not just us. Uh, but everybody participates in that, a lot of different organizations, and get a lot of good information out to those kids. Um, and then we're in the schools for whatever the, whatever events they need us for. If there's something special go on, going on in the schools, we can go in and participate. Um, we help fit kids with their Run for Good after school running program last year. So whatever whatever is needed of us, if we can do it, we'll be there. That's fantastic. Uh, something else I'd like to cover briefly, uh, there's, there was some pretty contentious, I'll use the word contentious, legislation that was passed. Uh, I know a lot of, you have a lot of proponents and you have a lot of people who are kind of upset uh, about the new booster seat law. Yes. I didn't know. <laughs> we did. uh, you a lot of people don't know. Inform me. Can you tell people one yeah. what this this piece of legislation is, and secondarily, uh, who it affects? Okay, uh, the legislation goes into effect as of last week, as of August second, that says that all children under four point four feet nine inches, or eight years old, so through the time that they're seven, need to be in a booster seat by law. Um, what we know is that age group, that five to seven year olds, the highest, the leading cause of death in that age group is automobile accidents. Really? So we are joining 47 other states that already have this legislation in place that says to protect these kids, we need them in booster seats. And you have little ones, you know, the seat belt hits you here and it goes across their stomachs here. Being in a booster seat is a really inexpensive way to protect your child. And it might be a tough sell for a seven-year-old that's been out of a seat for a while, but what it, if you, it puts them up higher so they can see what's going on and they don't have that belt constantly hitting, hitting them in the neck here. So we're partnering with um, a lot of different organizations. We'll be at National Night Out. Uh, we'll be at Verde River Days. We're partnering with Cottonwood PD so that we have flyers out all over the place to let people know so we can start educating um, and getting people. There There will eventually be a citation that goes with it, but I think everybody pretty much is on board that we're going to educate first and get the word out. First and foremost, education. Yeah. That's uh, fantastic. Uh, Carla, we do live uh, in an area, I mean, I think the unemployment rate hovers around 8 9%, something like that right now, currently, and I could be wrong. I just know it's somewhere in there. Hi. <laughs> but, uh, what if someone doesn't have the financial means to purchase? Okay, um, if if they if they can't purchase one, there are, I think they're about fourteen dollars in local stores, twenty dollars, up to twenty dollars. Uh, but we do have a limited supply of free booster seats, um, and again, they can call my number, which we'll make sure people have. And but we'll be at National Night Out in Cottonwood and Sedona, um, and we'll be at Birdie River Days as as long as we still have the supplies but the state gave us a supply of booster seats to get out to those that can't afford them. So people can get free booster seats for those kids. That's that's a great thing that you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. Uh, Carla, we could sit here and probably go on for another half hour about the menagerie things that you guys do. I know that you guys are highly involved, you're highly visible. Uh, mm -hmm. I see you out there, I know others do too. We have about a minute left. Uh, I wanted to talk briefly about the Trek About program, uh, group presentations, the Arizona Living Well program. <laughs> so much to talk But <laughs> in one minute, uh, can you just maybe wrap things up and talk about what you would like to? Is there anything specific okay. that you would like to talk about? Um, I think we've talked a lot about kids' programs and what's available for the school. We have other programs available for adults. Um, we have a chronic disease self-management program, which is free of charge to any adult that's dealing with diabetes, heart conditions, arthritis, anything that might um, inhibit their way of life. We, and it's, and it's all about 
getting them the information they need to, to manage their own lives. Um, it's not a medical program at all, but it's getting them the information that they need. Uh, we also have an HIV testing and counseling program that we go into um, different places and do group presentations, education, and, and then offer that program. Um, we're also doing, let me see, we do Smoke Free Arizona, which is the, uh, the statewide program that we, prom uh, so actually Smoke Free Arizona is a statewide program where we go out and actually visit places that are not in compliance with the Smoke Free Law, um, that all businesses have to have signs uh, that say 20 feet or more, no smoking, 20 feet or more from the store. So it's our job to go out and visit those people too. Well, that's kind of our job, and uh, the pretense of this show is to get people the information they need. Uh, Carla, I can't thank you enough for being on here. And uh, if you could just go ahead and uh, wrap things up for us, uh, maybe give the audience a, a telephone number once more if they okay. have any questions. Okay, any questions on anything we talked about today, you can reach me at 634-6858 or at Carla.hover, H-O-V-E-R, at Yavapai. US. Uh, well, that pretty much wraps things up, folks. Uh, Carla, thanks again for working with Parks and Rec so closely. Uh, I think what we're doing is a benefit to the community. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for being on here. And once again, telephone number 634-6858, and that's Carla's direct line. Thank you for tuning in.